Okay, and the, the last part, you mentioned that, uh, M. Laval, your trainer. Um, you've got a special relationship with that yard. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I'm, it was by chance. But, uh, um, I have a very good mate in Australia who's a journalist who also worked with uh, Alex, uh, Emma's brother. And uh, in 2006, I met Alex and he gave me uh, Emma's number and I, I rang her up about being involved with, with the horses. And uh, yeah, from then on, in, I've, got on re I've just got on really well with everyone down there, Emma and Barry Fenton and everybody just down there. Really good. And you're very much... Uh a hands-on owner you like to get into the yards meet the horses get to know the horses oh, absolutely you have to go with pockets full of polos for them and you know i, I was there yesterday the great long you know st stood by paisley park and the rasher counter and all the, all the horses there and it's, it's it's just wonderful now um i was speaking to a very clever form student a while back had the pleasure of meeting martin julian and he told me that he's uh, a good friend of yours yeah and you, you speak to each other very regularly. And he also tells me you have an extremely impressive memory of form. Now, is that, ha is that how you, you know, you know, is that true? Well, it's the way I have to do it because I'm, I'm pretty much a technophobe. I'm not very computer literate, if we're honest about it, um, uh, Simon. So, yeah, I have to keep a lot in my head. It's, it's hard work, but you do your best. And he tells me you can you can sort of say if a horse made a mistake five out in a you fairly do, nondescript race you do three try, or four months you, ago. I think it affects your pocket. You remember it even more, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so how how did you how did you meet Martin? Um, it's really because he's been doing the service for years and years and years, a, um, a publication service, and he, he used to do um, so he used to put it on when he was based down in Deal in Kent years ago. They used to put it on a cassette and send it to me every week. I used to subscribe to him then, and, then, and then I've met him subsequently on various race courses. And um, one day I intend to go up there because I'd like to go to one of the courses I haven't been to is Cartmel. So he's always said that if I go up, go, do go up there, I should go there, which I'd love to do. So is um, you say you have to have to memorise form? Is there no other way you can sort of study form? Well, not really. Um, uh, to a degree, I listen to a lot, quite a lot of podcasts as well now, which are quite useful. But I just have to study it from the basics, from the basics, you know, the form perspective on the, the television, radio, whatever, you know, and, and try and remember as much as I can. And any any podcasts that you you recommend? Um, I've listened to one or two recently. I mean, I think the one that the Racing Post is really, the Racing Postcast is good, is quite good. And there's another one, the, the Final Furlong, which I've listened to as well. Yep, I'd like to know about more. Actually, some of them aren't all, aren't all accessible for the for my uh, Alexa. Oh, I shouldn't have said that for my system over there because um, uh, you know you you just can't get everything. Some are just related to the phone apps, and I haven't got their various apps on my phone. Is um so you obviously put put a bit of work in one way or another. There is betting a big part of your sporting life. Yes. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, I love. I love betting on the golf as well as the races, and I don't do bet on football so much. I know lots of people do these days. I, I don't, um, but I love the, the odds are so interesting with the golf to me. I like that, and the racing obviously is of paramount importance. And I, I bet both here and uh, in Australia quite regularly. Do you, when you're at the races, do you ever venture down into the betting ring? I used to, but nowadays I tend to, which is sad now. I I, I tend to just ring up on the phone, but I used to love it. Yeah, I used to love it going down there. Yeah, and. Uh, I had a bookie in, in London for years who was very uh, good with his time. About you know, when I used to bring him up and he used to go over the phone, talk about things. Yeah, it's very good. Now you've, um, as well as your, uh, your your interests in the UK, you've also got or had horses in training in Ireland and Australia. I have still got the Discorama in Ireland. Was I own half of that with Paul Nolan. It's uh, he's been at Cheltenham. He's been at Cheltenham three of the, the last three years and been placed. I've had horses in Australia with uh, OTI. I mean, and my first venture to Australia was actually with Trip to Paris, who I bought into after he'd actually won the Gold Cup because some of the shareholders wanted to sell. And uh, I was the only rep there when he was second in the Caulfield Cup, and that was fantastic. And uh, obviously fourth in the Melbourne Cup that year as well. But I've had various other horses out there with uh, OTI syndicate mainly, and um, I've, I've, I thoroughly enjoy it and going and high clear as well. But I go and visit the trainers out there as well. It's great. So you've been racking up the air miles to Australia over the years? Many times, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. I think 30 trips in total I've done, I think, yeah. And wh where's the where's the place you most enjoy to go and experience a day at the races? Uh, here or where? Anywhere. You've got your choice of the whole world. I think I think York on the flat, definitely. Cheltenham, I think, is, is great. 
obviously. And, um, and for an actual day, I think the, the Melbourne Cup is a great day at Fleming tonight. You think the Cox Plate at Mooney Valley when it's really a small little amphitheatre like that. It's, it's, and the roar as the horses come out, it's fantastic. And how do you feel about UK racing specifically? How, how do you think it fares at the moment? I think the prize money is appalling. Um, I think particularly for jumps, I think, you know, the, the low, the, the, uh, for your, your bumpers, it's hardly worth putting the horse, the horse in the box sometimes, isn't it? You know, um, I think overall it's, it's still, there could be a lot to be done, but I mean, they've made a big effort certainly this year since the, since the crisis we've been through. Um, I think racing could, it definitely is trying to improve its image as regards drawing to get more people, to, uh, more spectator participation. Obviously that's been hampered by what's gone on. Um, I do think UK racing at the moment is in a relatively good position, but I think it, I think the prize money is a massive factor. And when you see horses in France or, or even in Ireland, and the prize money is that much better, you've, you've got to be worried, really. Is, is there anything you'd like to change, apart from the prize money, specifically from the um, outlook of an owner? Um, I think... I think I'm not sure. I think I think they do as much as they can to a degree. I think, but I think owners have got. You, you, we need to encourage it, and I think I think that the syndications, the syndicates, that are, which are much more prevalent in Australia now, are becoming more and more here because it is quite an investment for a single owner to undertake. Yeah, and syndicates got you involved with ownership in the first. And I place. think it's great. Yeah, they did, and I think it's great the way that all these syndicates now are. You know, are, it's a way of getting people involved. And how do you think? Um, racing could sort of up its game a bit in getting people that are because i know people like us racing is part of our nature and it's but we don't realize that the vast majority of people don't give a damn about racing so how could we how do you think we could try and get them to sort of take notice of it and maybe uh, embrace it like we or uh, racing people have already well i think the, the courses have obviously been trying their own methods have been to like get get these uh, summer meetings, haven't they, with their bands playing? And, and, but people are just coming along for the for the music, it seems to me, not for necessarily for the racing, aren't they? You know. Um, but I mean, I can see that there's a money maker for them, and they've got to try and think of anything that's possible. Um, I think. I think overall, I think I think there should be a. I think we have to face up to the fact. I mean, though we're we're racing fans, but really realistic at the moment racing is definitely a minority sport because the, ter the terrestrial television coverage isn't as good as it used to be and which is a great shame i know the satellite companies are doing a very good job but you aren't still getting the numbers i mean itv have done a really good job recently i must say um in getting people in, in, involved particularly at these troubled times when people have been watching more and more terrestrial coverage that they've put on but i do worry about the getting more, more people involved how we can do it do you think maybe that racing has um, a bit of a delusions of grandeur as in its popularity? Absolutely. It's realistic. Yes, I do. Okay, so you're, um, you, you know, you've really hit the jackpot with Paisley Park. Um, what are your sort of future ambitions in horse racing, horse racing, horse racing ownership and beyond? I, I mean, I want to stay involved as long as I can. I mean, obviously these things are all, you know, very... Um, it, it all depends on your finances, doesn't it? More than anything, I mean, it's, it's a costly experience being an owner. But I'd like to stay involved, and if I could, <laughs> if I'm lucky enough to have another horse that does well for me, it'd be even better. But um, I want to stay involved definitely, and you know, even whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll still be going to the races, whatever I do. I think. And if you had to, um, if you could have one horse, where would it be trained? I, don't, I mean, where, you know, would it be in Australia? Would it be in Ireland? Would it be over here? Oh, I think, I think what I'd love to do, if I'm really honest, I'd, I'd love to have a, a horse. Well, anything that trained over here, jump horse can obviously stay with Emma. But I'd love, and, and the, I know it's a strange thing to say, but um, people are going about. Uh, I'm, I'm realistic enough to know that there's no chance in hell that I'll ever be able to own a, a classic win over here because they only go to certain places. But I would still like to think that it's possible to try and win a big handicap, i.e. the Melbourne Cup. That's interesting, because I expected you immediately to say Cheltenham. Now, there's been a bit of a talk recently that there's far, far too much focus, and really people are talking about Cheltenham, and it's not even next year yet. 
So do you agree with that, that Cheltenham is too much of a focus? I do. I definitely do. I mean, I think Nicky Henderson took a lot of flack last week for withdrawing Altior. I think he he was did completely the right thing. I mean, last year he ran the horse when against surname and the press was making such a song and dance of that and it and it bottled him out bottled him out for the year. And you know, the trainer's trainer is the one who's he's not he's not obliged to just run the horse because the spectators are turning up. I can't have that. Jump racing or flat, which is your I assume jump racing, but Yeah, I think jump jump racing definitely. Um I, I love them both, I really do. I think there's, there's something great about the flats and going to the classics and to the big handicaps and the sprints. But I think with the, the jumps, it's the fact that the people involved, they come back year in, year out because they know these horses. There's a longevity about them, which is fantastic. You know, you come back to see your old favourites, your Alti horse, as I said last weekend, you know, or well, I didn't run, but it was, it was people of that ilk, who horses of that ilk who come in year in, year out. And I think overall the, the jump owners and the um, jumping race fan is I would say it's much more of a racing racing fan in general. I mean, I really do think it's a, it's a great sport, jump racing, and it's for the real enthusiast. Okay, and finally, this is a, a nasty one, really. Music or horse racing, if you had to pick? I couldn't. <laughs> I know that. I've, I've, been, I've been asked before, music, horse racing, or cricket, and I said, okay, you know, horse racing is joined cricket now as my top sports, and, and, and it's probably his top altogether, but... You know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. No, music's vital, keeps you going. Absolutely. Well, Andrew Gemmell, thank you very much. Pleasure.